Welcome to the Love Your Marriage Podcast, hosted by Joseph and Crystal Gruber. We are here to awaken authentic Catholic culture through holy matrimony. And that begins with our marriage, and now yours. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Direct, O Lord, our actions by thy holy inspiration, and carry them on by thy gracious assistance, that every word and work of ours may begin in thee, and by thee be happily ended. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Welcome to the Love Your Marriage podcast. I am Joseph Gruber, half of the podcast, because that's the schedule that we're keeping right now. So delighted to be with you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I guess we don't, like, tune things anymore, unless... That's not important right now. That is a distraction from the main point. And the main point today is how you speak to your spouse creates the world that you live in. I don't mean this in a new agey sort of way. I mean in this this in a profoundly Christian sort of way. How do I mean this? Well, I'll tell you a story that hopefully will be illustrative. So the story goes, and uh, this is a story about a, a relative of mine, and it's one of my favorite stories just in general. And the story goes, this American monk went and visited a Coptic monastery, a monastery in Egypt. And this monastery was an ancient monastery, never been uh, truly modernized or updated. And he was there in the middle of summer during a heat wave. So temperatures were going above 130 degrees during the day. His body couldn't really take it. The the water quality at that particular monastery was not very good. Uh, The, the, the monks there at the monastery were used to this. They, they were acclimated to this, this kind of heat and, and this sort of living situation, but this American monk was not. And the abbot saw that this, this monk, this monk from America, was ill and, and potentially even on the brink of death. So he made the decision to, to send him on a pilgrimage to the nearby mountain in which there was a cave that the founder of the, the monastery would go to for his own hermitages way, way back when. And so he, the abbot assigned an elderly monk to precede him, to lead him to the mountain and to the cave that he might be refreshed. It was a pilgrimage in 130 plus degree heat. And because it was a pilgrimage, they were asked to go without their shoes on because they were going to be treading upon holy ground. So as this American monk was walking in the heat, his feet were leaving bloody footprints as he was walking on sand and stone and uh, bearing the brunt of the sun's power. And so while he was doing this, as you might imagine, he was grumbling to himself. He was grumbling even to God a little bit. He was miserable. And he could hear that the elderly monk before him was also doing something under his breath. But it wasn't until they got to the mountain that he actually stopped to listen to what the elderly monk was doing. And what the elderly monk was doing, ladies and gentlemen, dear listener, he was singing a simple song of praise to God. He was praising God for the heat that reminded him of the love of God. He was praising him for the desert wilderness as a place to meet God. He was praising him for the founder of the monastery who had left them a holy place to visit. He was praising him for the 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 sun and the wind and the sand. He was praising him for this opportunity to be on pilgrimage, his every breath was a praise of God. And so this American monk had this profound realization that there in this desert wasteland, this elderly monk had created a garden of Eden in his heart by how he was talking to God. The praise of God changed the world that that elderly monk was living in. And then the elderly monk invited him to sing a song of praise to God. And so he croaked out, I think, the Salve Regina and some other uh, awesome hymns, right? Praising God for what he has done in his creation. And that changed the world of this American monk. This is deeply profound, ladies and gentlemen, as we consider our marriage. Our marriage, like creation, is dialogic. God created the heavens and the earth. And he didn't create it uh, from stuff. He created it from nothing other than his own speech. And he didn't create it for it to be a monologue. He created it to create the conditions for a dialogue. He created it that we might make a full response of ourselves back to him. So too, in our marriage, in our home, we are not there 
to, uh, to, to live solitary lives, little monologues passing each other. Nor are we there to grumble at one another or to be filled with bitterness or resentment. We are there, first and foremost, for the greater glory of God to sing his praises from moment to moment, and then to engage one another in speech that is going to be building one another up. The way that we speak from one spouse to the other and back, is the world that our children live in. The world that our children live in is created by the communication between husband and wife. How I speak to my wife and how my wife speaks to me is the, the boundary of our children's world while they are growing up. It is also the world in which we live. The world that I choose to live with my wife is framed by how I speak to her and how she speaks to me. Why is this important? Because I can change how I speak. The way in which I speak, both the words and the intonations can change, and they can change for the better or for the worse. I can become more bitter and grumbly and grumpy. I can also become more thankful and more praising and, and more uh, uplifting. And I think there, there's a, a helpful sort of framework for this, in prayer, we can talk about four different ways of addressing God. Sometimes you'll see this acronym of ACTS, ACTS, and they stand for adoration, to praise God for who he is, contrition, to, to beg for mercy from God, uh, for we have sinned, thanksgiving, for all that he has done for us, and then supplication, to lay out all of our needs. And if we are able to engage in all four of those dimensions of prayer, we're creating a little slice of paradise betwixt us and God, because we are, we are saying the most necessary things. We are saying the things that ought to be said. And you can imagine a, a spiritual life that is lacking one of these things, a, a, a spiritual life in which we never thank God, or a, a spiritual life in which we never ask anything from him, or a spiritual life in which we just ignore the fact that he is God and we are not, that we, we don't uh, speak words of adoration, or we never say that we're sorry. We, never, we always justify ourselves. We're always right in, in the light of God. And we can see how messed up that is. So too, in our marriage, we can have the same four kinds of dynamics. Not exactly the same because it's a natural analog, so it's not going to perfectly map on, but we can, we can express our love and respect for our spouse. We don't adore our spouse, but we do love them and respect them. We, we have a kind of reverence for them as other. We can, we can not only admit that we are sorry, we can create conditions in which they can apologize to us, where reconciliation and mercy is something that we can, we can maybe not expect because we don't want to presume upon it, but where, where we, we, we condition our hearts to be merciful. And we let our spouse know that we are merciful and we desire to be merciful to them because we desire their good. We can express thanksgiving. That one maps on pretty well. We can just say, thank you for what you have done. This thing that you did, I am grateful for it. I discovered this with my wife. If I thanked her for particular things that she did that I appreciated, she would do those things more often because guess what? She likes to be thanked. I also like to be thanked. And that is a good thing. That is a, a good dynamic to have betwixt man and woman, between husband and wife. And then supplication, we can reveal our legitimate needs to our spouse. We can say, this is what I need. This is what I'm struggling with. These are the areas in which I need help. They might not be able to do anything about it, or they might not be able to do everything about it. They are not God, but they at the very least can offer our needs to God on our behalf and more likely, they can try to set us up for success, and they can be working for us. They can be our teammate in these things. So these four things, with God, adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, and supplication, creates a little slice of paradise. And for our spouse, love and respect, uh, conditions for reconciliation, thanksgiving, and uh, legitimate needs. That one doesn't form as nice of a little acronym, my apologies. but. What are we? What are we really here for, ladies and gentlemen? Me for? Are are you here for me to come up with really great uh, 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 cross sticks and the like, or are you here for a little slice of support and encouragement for your marriage? I hope it's a little bit of both, 
failed you on the first one, but I hope the second one came through that there's a little bit of support and encouragement here because you have control over how you speak. It may be a bumpy ride to make changes in what you say and how you say it, but you have control over that. You don't have control over what your spouse says or how they say it, but you do have control over how you speak. And that's half of the equation. You also have control over whether or not you are praying to God. So you have a lot of uh, control over whether or not you're responding to God rightly, because God is always making the most perfect move toward you. At all times and in every place, God draws close to man. And so that is happening. Maybe not at all times and in every place is our spouse drawing close to us, but we can draw close to them. We can support them. We can encourage them. We can create a world through our speech with them. That's all I have to say on that topic. There's a lot more that can be plucked from it. I hope that this is the beginning of a conversation between you and your spouse. This can be a rough one because how we speak, sometimes we identify ourselves by our patterns of speech, and that's not who we are. Who we are can change in that respect. We can change how we speak because we can learn how to love better. Learning how to love better is always the right decision, and learning how to love your marriage is what this podcast is about. If you're a Catholic husband, a Catholic married man, and you'd like 45 minutes with me, I'll put a link in the show notes. That's all I'm going to say about that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This has been a production of Our Outpost, a ministry to awaken authentic Catholic culture through holy matrimony. Please like, share, subscribe, rate, and review if you found this helpful and encouraging. Find out more at OurOutpost.org.